here's a fun fact about me. My first word was bridge. And it was because of this beauty, the Alex Fraser Bridge. Before we get into this, uh, just a quick a, a note, call to action, if you will. Um, if you've been noticing that uh, I haven't been posting a lot or that other creators that you like uh, are struggling on this app, it's because we're not paying money to promote things, so they're not showing people our videos. So if you see a video that you love, like, uh, comment to engage, but most importantly, favorite it and share it. That is what tells this app to show people our stuff. So that's one of the best ways you can support your favorite creators on this app. Now, on with the show. The initial planning for the bridge began in the 1970s with the required right of way on Annesis Island being acquired in 1973. They needed that to build the bridge. Construction began in 1984 with the bridge officially opening on September 22nd, 1986. Named after the former Minister of Transportation, Alex Fraser, the bridge spans the length of the Fraser River, helping to connect the cities of New Westminster, Richmond, and North Delta. It also helped create a new route to the U.S. border. The bridge cost a total of $58 million to build, which would be around $138 million now, which is basically a steal. Now, the Alex Fraser Bridge is a cable state bridge, and at the time of completion was the longest bridge of its type in the world at 1,526 feet. It held that record until 1991 when the Skarnsund Bridge was built in Norway and it beat out the Alex Fraser by 200 feet. It spans 1,740 feet. Now, some articles claim that it was the Ravenel Bridge. Are any of you Southern Charm fans like me? That stole the Alex Fraser's crown in 2005, but the Skarnsund is longer than the Ravenel Bridge too. The four central towers of the Alex Fraser Bridge were also the highest structures in Metro Vancouver, standing at an impressive 154 meters high, which is the equivalent to a 50-story building. They obviously no longer hold that record as the height limit for buildings now stands at 200 meters. Now the towers themselves sit on steel piles that were driven down 90 meters in order to find solid footing, which is about the equivalent of a 27-story building. Anasis Island itself is a sandbar, so it's not surprising that they had to drill down the length of an average downtown condo to find solid ground. The fact that Anasis Island is a sandbar is also why my father kept a canoe in its manufacturing plant on the island in case of an earthquake. The pilings that well, they drove into the ground are topped with caps that required 450 truckloads of cement that had to be poured in one shot in order to preserve the structural integrity. This apparently took every available cement truck in the region to achieve. Color me impressed. And apparently this worked because the pilings can, in theory, sustain a hit from a ship going 12 knots. Large ships in the area should be traveling at speeds less than that, although I don't know if I find this reassuring because I never thought of a ship hitting a bridge up until now. Even the cables on the bridge are special. There are 192 specially manufactured steel cables that were imported from the UK. Each cable is made up of 283 strands of galvanized steel that's about the same thickness as a pencil. When the bridge originally opened, only four lanes of traffic were available. A year later, all six lanes were opened due to demand. Towards the end of 2019, the zipper truck was added to the bridge to create a seventh counterflow lane to ease congestion during rush hour. Bless the zipper truck. Now the construction of the Alex Fraser Bridge was not without its own bit of scandal and controversy. In 1984, the St. Mungo Cannery, a historic site at the south end of the bridge, was bulldozed despite its history and the fact that it was also the site of an ancient indigenous midden. A commemorative park was built under the bridge in honor of the settlement of the Suquexan people. Prior to it being bulldozed, there were early archeological surveys of the site that revealed over 1,700 artifacts. Of those artifacts, some of the found materials indicated that those living at the settlement were engaging with other groups and that they were leading a more maritime-oriented life. So as far as middens go, it was actually pretty important to understanding early settlements of Indigenous people. And then in the summer of 1985, while building an access ramp, they severed a sewage line that dumped millions of liters of raw sewage into the river which already doesn't smell that great. 
Now, if you've made it this far, congratulations. And you're wondering how the Alex Fraser Bridge inspired my first foray into the English language. It's because my father owned a custom mill workshop on Annesis Island, as I previously mentioned. Obviously, he was ecstatic over the idea of the bridge as it made his commute from our home in Surrey, yes, that is where I am from, over to Annesis Island infinitely easier than it had in the past. It was quite the hot topic in our house, and he would drive by it often to check the status of our future favorite bridge. In fact, the Alex Fraser Bridge is such a fan favorite in our family that my Uncle Richard, who lives in Dartford, Kent, likes to go visit the Queen Elizabeth II Bridge that spans the Dartford Crossing because it reminds him of the Alex Fraser Bridge. We have quite the bond with that bridge.